We are recording. Hi, everyone. My name is Leili Seyfi. I'm an associate professor at the University of Birjan. I'm here with Steve Kramer, one of the ELC directors. Hi, Steve. Welcome. Good morning, Leili. How are you? Thank you. I'm so glad to have you here. I have uh, today a few questions for you. OK. Uh, yeah, please uh, introduce yourself and tell us how did you get involved with entrepreneurship? All right. I am Steve Kramer, as you know, from the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. So one of the uh, public universities here in North Carolina in the United States. Um, I'm the business librarian and also the entrepreneurship librarian with an Aranka professor and have been here about 20 years. So I've been here a while now. Um, and, and as Dr. Laley said, Dr. Sefi, I am one of the uh, directors of the Entrepreneurship and Libraries Conference, along with our friend Angel Truesdale from UNC Charlotte. And I have enjoyed so much meeting people around the world uh, and learning from people around the world through the ELC and its free online programming, which we'll talk about more in a little bit, I, I suspect. Uh, how did I get involved in entrepreneurship? We our campus developed a cross-campus entrepreneurship program about 10 years ago, maybe 10, 12 years ago. Um, cross-campus meeting that's not just in a business school, but rather we have art students, science students, education students, so, uh, social science students, also learning about entrepreneurship as part of their own classes and their own curriculum. So it's not so it's not just business students who want to start a business or start a nonprofit. It's anyone across campus with the thought that entrepreneurship should not be limited to business students, but should be something that everyone knows about, regardless of what profession or what skills they have. And as we as my campus hired a new director, whose name is um, And having said that, I can't remember her name. That's very embarrassing. Um, yes. Dr. Diane, um, I'll, I'll think for that. Sorry, I'm just shy from speaking on this video briefly. And it'll come to me in just a moment, I'm sure. Uh, a very prominent professor and leader to, of creating organizations programs. And so I wanted to get more involved in that program. And so I basically introduced myself to her and asked for some more uh, support, or if she needed more support with her classes, with the students regarding library research and research skills in general. And she accepted my invitation, Dr. Dan Welsh, sorry, I forgot why I couldn't think of Dr. Welsh's name earlier, uh, and became, became involved in several of the core required classes for this program. And that really was to springboard the, the, the starting point for me to get more involved with entrepreneurship across campus, including getting involved with Dr. Welsh. And then later on, she, Dr. Welsh recruited me to be one of her Coleman Fellows. We once had a grant program funded by the Coleman Foundation of Chicago. And the Coleman Foundation had a focus on supporting entrepreneurship outside of business schools. So they help fund faculty members who are not business school faculties to include entrepreneurship in their classes. And so like I already mentioned, we had arts and sciences and education professors, and me as well, uh, learning how to teach entrepreneurship in addition to our core normal teaching topics like librarianship in my case. And so that gave me an opportunity to, to really get involved with the professors across campus, not just Dr. Welsh and the business school faculty. And it went on from there. Um, one other thing that's worth noting, uh, the ELC is officially coordinated through a organization called Blink, B-L-I-N-C, Business Librarianship North Carolina. Uh, it, Blink is a partnership of both public, academic, public and academic librarians and also special librarians. And we often discuss in our quarterly free workshops how to better support entrepreneurs whether they are starting nonprofits or starting for-profit businesses and so on. And so that was another aspect of entrepreneurship and getting more involved with the community, with the cities, with the counties, the governments, um, and, and non-governmental organizations in North Carolina that are encouraging promoting entrepreneurship. And so that's through Blink, uh, which helps coordinate the ELC, been able to get involved in the community, not just on campus. So Dr. Safi, I think those are the two main ways I've been getting into entrepreneurship, both on campus and off campus. Thank you. And it's very, very, I would say, valuable experiences. And I myself, you know, uh, started really learning from you. 
by the time I joined I joined your team. So that's really a precious experiences for me especially. Thank you mm -hmm. for sharing your uh, thoughts and uh, experiences. And Steve, could you please uh, tell your idea how libraries uh, can position themselves in entrepreneurship ecosystems? Sure, I think there could we could summarize this into three strategies of how libraries, public and economic and others can get involved in entrepreneurship. One is promoting the fact that we have experts in terms of research. We don't necessarily need to be experts in terms of how to how to start a business, how to be an entrepreneur. That may not be our background, but we know how to find data. We often know how to find articles and other types of research that entrepreneurs need to do to explore the industry, to understand and, and measure their market, their market size, the market trends, for example to understand and identify and research the competitors they were competing against, and even how to find financial data. We don't necessarily need to know how to work with the financial data, but we know where to find it. We can say, here's some benchmark, here's some sample um, income statement information that you should consider when you're drafting your own financial research. So uh, one, experts. We are experts in research, and we can help entrepreneurs get data and information they need to make good decisions about their project. And two, somewhat connected, we not always, but often libraries have content that is not available otherwise, particularly for free. Um, and this varies by, by city and county and by country. Um, but for example, in North Carolina, we have a wonderful organization called NCLIVE, NC Live. It is funded statewide by through our tax dollars or income tax dollars. And it provides statewide every library in the state with a set of databases, research tools, proprietary research tools. In the business world, we would say business intelligence tools. So, um, for example, Data Excel and ProQuest and Morningstar. And we used to get Simply Linux that way as well. So these are tools that uh, that are not free normally, but are free through a library because it's paid for by tax dollars. And it provides content for entrepreneurs that they can't get to otherwise unless they pay a lot of money for them individually. So for example, and it's of course, and this varies of course by location. So not all states and places and countries offer this, but we have content, we own information and provide information, whether online or physical paper information that can help entrepreneurs make decisions. So for example, Data X, so go in um, to its businesses module, identify your industry and your target market, and you can see all the competitors. Or if you're a business to business uh, entrepreneurship idea, you're selling something to businesses, uh, not to consumers. You can do market research in a sense of identifying your, your buying industries and making a list and downloading a list of all the companies in the industry that make that. That's one example, very precise example of a product that available through our libraries in North Carolina. And so the other libraries have other content they can provide, even just uh, articles from EBSCO or ProQuest or any package you have from Gale and so on can be very beneficial to help entrepreneurs. So resources. And third, library spaces. Entrepreneurs often need a space to get on the internet, to have a quiet, study space or work space, perhaps to rent a room, not rent a room, but reserve a room for a group meeting for for with your teammates or partners or a funder. So spaces, libraries provide spaces for working, networking, um, collaboration, and that is a part of part. So I would say expertise, our research skills, number one. Number two, our resources we provide, the research tools we have access to, and three, the spaces we provide. And all these three things can help up and you're really uh, get going with their own idea that they want to pursue. Exactly, thank you, thank you. Exactly, uh, especially like I would say, uh, uh, I observed like from my own experiences in rural libraries that all like rural uh, entrepreneurs in public libraries were telling that we need space more, you know, for mm -hmm. like <clears throat> having meetings and, you know, networking. So exactly. Thank you for sharing. Uh, the next question is uh, that uh, how your library uh, support entrepreneurship? Okay. It, it's like you are well. working at the university library. So I want to know how your library supports entrepreneurship. Okay. It's similar to what we were just discussing. Um, we yeah. do have a budget for databases, so online resources that support 
business students, but also entrepreneurship students. So industry analysis tools, for example, market analysis tools, market data that supplements what we get to for free in the United States from the U.S. Census Bureau for demographics of, of people and households in our country and in our states. Um, so that's one aspect is simply providing resources as accessible, but also um, it can be the sound self-centered as an answer, but as a entrepreneurship librarian, students get access to me and I visit them in their classrooms as well as outside mm -hmm. their classrooms, whether through Zoom or whether face-to-face -face, for consultations where they can ask three questions about how do I find the data I need for my project, or I simply come in with a workshop, a hands-on active learning workshop where they are learning how to do research and then can apply that research to their own project, to their own idea. So the databases, the spaces, uh, and my role to do workshops and also provide consultations for students is largely how the, our library supports entrepreneurship. Oh, great. great. And uh, could you share with us uh, information needs and practices of entrepreneurs? Yeah, sure. It certainly varies, mm -hmm. right? By by the nature of the, the the idea they're trying to pursue. You know, whether it's what industry it happens to be, whether it's for profit or non profit, or what country or or state it even it would operate in. But I think there's at least in terms of like research, there's really four big topics entrepreneurs need to to work with. One is the industry analysis. I'm going to go into the, I'm going to start an organization, whether a company or a nonprofit. What industry does it operate in? What are the trends in the industry? Uh, what, are the, what is the outlook, the forecast, the future of the industry? So industry analysis um, and likewise market analysis. Who am I selling to or providing services to uh, in the context of a nonprofit entrepreneurship? So understanding the, the marketplace or the citizens that are within the, the market definition of that entrepreneurship idea. And we also could break this down into like demographic data, you know, population data versus psychographic data. We get into that with students here. Uh, behavioral data, how, how people make decisions. How do they spend their money? How much money do they spend on certain activities and things that are relevant to the idea? So market research. And we already mentioned briefly, there's also business to business marketing. So that's identifying organizations that would buy your product or use your services. So that's another kind of research for the marketing. Um, third, benchmarking, financials. The hardest part for many entrepreneurs is doing spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. What's going to be my balance sheet look like? What's my consignment likely to be? What kind of numbers do I expect? How much am I going to have to pay for labor costs, for rent, for purchasing materials, for example, the cost of goods sold? Um, financial work is hard. And a lot of our entrepreneurs in the United States, at least, are very passionate people with really good ideas. And often they want to help people. They want to solve problems, but they haven't thought about whether it's sustainable. Can this idea last? Can I start this and will it still be, in accounting terms, will I still have cash flow six months from now? Because we don't, mm -hmm. we don't need more, uh, let me rephrase that. This comes up a lot with nonprofits. Uh, people want to start a nonprofit for wonderful reasons, trying to solve problems, trying to help people. But we don't need more poorly designed and failing nonprofits. We need to pr propose and support nonprofits that are going to be successful in what they do um, and not waste precious resources and, and valuable time on things that aren't going to work out and not serve the people they were intended to serve, right? That's part of it as well. So financial benchmarking, one way to do that, and that's hard. Um, and then fourth, mm -hmm. I would probably say competitors. Who are you competing with? Or I mentioned nonprofits a lot because that's a big part of UNCG is nonprofit social entrepreneurship. You know, it's tied into this too. A part of it is also who are your partners? Right? Who's doing something similar work to you? Who can you work with? Um, as well as who you're competing with. So that's a major part. So industries, the markets, financial benchmarking, competition. And some of those overlap, of course, in terms of like strategy and content. But I think those are the big four needs for entrepreneurs, particularly regarding how the library can support them. Thank you, thank you. And uh, Steve, uh, what do you hope the ELC conference in November uh, will accomplish? Well, very good. thank you, good question. This will be another good event. We have international group of speakers who are signed up to either do live uh, 
content, live speeches, and presentations, and also pre-recorded videos from many different countries. Um, so I'm looking forward to learning from each other, learning from them, and us learning from each other, and not just within one country. That's one value that you'll see in addition to the fact that all of the events are free and that all the events are available online is that we, uh, it's a quite diverse group. And we, that with some intention, with very, not some, with very strong intentionality that we recruit a wide diversity of topics too. And one, another thing I'm looking forward to for this fall event from the ELC is that it's sort of a back to the basics. We've had a lot of specialized uh, ELC events and they're all archived on the website. You can go and watch all the old videos, for example. But this one is meant to sort of go back to the basics. What is the core needs? of libraries in terms of supporting entrepreneurship. What do we need to know to do this eff work effectively, to effectively support entrepreneurs? So in addition to the diversity of, of the speakers and that it's a free online event, I'm looking forward to kind of going back to just the basics of what it takes to be a good entrepreneurship supporting library and support our communities um, through that process. Is that is that a good answer, Ailey? Yeah, yeah, great. Okay. And it's always for me also, it's like, a very uh, learning, I would say, learning opportunity. And I recommend everybody that to join this free conference. It's like, really, we should not, I mean, outside like uh, scholars, librarians should not miss this really great opportunity, learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much. Any other thoughts or experience would you like to share as a director of uh, ELC? I will add, Laylee, that we will be doing our pitch competition next spring, where we give away money to libraries to start programs to support entrepreneurs. And it's given the financial aspects of, of this, we, we don't do it fully internationally, but we hope to have U.S. and Canada. Actually, no, I'm, I'm going to take that back. We may be able to make it international this time um, in terms of that anyone we could spend, give away the gifts. Um, to any country that's, we're going to do this in, with EBSCO. So keep more news about that later on. Um, but largely, I uh, just throw out an invitation. Uh, in addition to attending and participating in the networking that these ELC events provide, we often, we always each time submit for content for speakers. And if you, in, in the fall of 2024, we'll probably do something else that's um, an open-ended conference proposal. And I encourage everyone who's interested to both attend, but also to consider submitting your content because we can learn so much from each other. And this conference, among other conferences, supports that learning. That's all, Lily. Thank you, thank you. It, it's great news that uh, the, the pitch competition will be for like uh, international level. That is great, great Hopefully it will news. be, yes, we'll see. And yeah. I ha I'm so happy for that, yes. Thank you so much for your uh, valuable time and sharing these great experiences with us. Thanks a lot. Dr. Sefi, thank you. And thank you, by the way, as a director for making many of these videos. And it's a wonderful service you are providing um, to our group. So thank you for your work and your contributions as well. My pleasure. Thank you.